Hello and welcome to Jolene Knits A Lot. This is my show about knitting and crafting and the things I get up to here in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. We're definitely, definitely in summer mode now. We have been having a bit of a heat wave here, although last night we had a nice little thunder shower. It didn't last very long and didn't scare the dog very much and cooled things off nicely. Uh, it looks like we're having another beautiful cloudless blue sky day, uh, which is great. How are things where you are? Um, is it hot, hot, hot? Or are you uh, are you in winter time and is it cool and you're in the midst of your cozy knitting season? I'd love to know. Today, I am sporting my most, one of my most recent finished tops, and that is the Rowdy Tank Top. This is a top by Caitlin Tarowski. Well, I really hope I got that right. This is how you spell her name. And as ever, if I talk about a pattern on this show, I will link it in the show notes below so you can find links to Ravelry patterns or other places on the internet where I find these patterns, if you're interested in knitting them too. I'll um, also always have comments or notes on my comp on my project pages on Ravelry. So if you're interested in what size needle I used or what yarn I used and you can't remember and I didn't mention, um, then you can always look on my Ravelry page and all that information should be there. This is the Rowdy Tank Top. Let me show you how it looks. Ta -da. This, I think, is the last of my summer knits for this year. Um, and I'm planning to do a little video on summarizing the uh, summer knits that I made this year. I made four. And so uh, you can look forward to that in the next couple of weeks, I think, um, where I'll just tell you about some of the summer knits I've made and how I've been enjoying wearing them. So this is the Rowdy Tank Top. I knit it in Ritual Dyes Undine, which is a fingering weight linen cotton blend. And this is the color Jewel Bead. You may notice, as I did, that there are some like, I guess, undyed spots, but they happen on the second skein, which is like the lower skein. And I actually, it's, I was going to say it's less obvious in person, but mm, it's hard to say. It doesn't really bother me. I think from here, you can see, it just, it maybe looks like there's a little bit of fading out at the bottom, but it, I don't know, it doesn't overly bother me. Um, I have thrown this tank top through the washer and the dryer a couple times, and it has softened up a little bit, but I'm hoping that with continued wear, it will continue to soften up nicely. I think it's a very wearable shape. I think that um, next time I might try a smaller size because there is a little bit of like extra fabric you can see here. Um, but overall, I think it's it's a very comfortable thing to wear, especially if the yarn starts to soften up a bit as I wear it. So this is the last of my summer knits. And um, as I said, I will be doing a video summarizing the summertime knits or the warm weather knits that I've made in the last few months and how, um, how I see myself wearing them. So you can look forward to that video, I think, coming out in the next couple weeks. I do have some more finished objects, though, off the needles. And mostly, I think once I finished all of these tank tops, which most of the things I knit for summer seem to be mostly stockinette stitch. So very sort of simple and straightforward knitting. Um, so I needed to challenge myself with something different. So I had cast on the Sunny Side Up socks. This is a pattern from Summer Lee's um, The Sock Project book and I'm, I'm knitting these for my knit along that I'm hosting called The Summer of Summer Lee Socks. So if you're interested in joining in, um, you can follow the hashtag Summer of Summer Lee Socks over on Instagram and uh, by the end of summer, which is September 21st, I'll be drawing for a couple of winners of prizes, which I have not decided on yet. <laughs> but these are the Sunny Side Up socks. I knit them using a lot of um, Knit Pick Stroll. So this um, deep sort of tealy color is called Rainforest Heather, I believe. And then the gold color is Goldenrod Heather. And then the cream color is my standard um, West Yorkshire Spinners in the Milk Bottle colorway. And they're super cute. Giving them a block and putting them on um, sock blockers really evened out the um, color work. So as you can see, there's no like wrinkling or anything. It's all very smooth. Uh, yeah, I'm quite happy with how these turned out. The one thing I did change about these socks was I, instead of um, placing a sock 
or uh, sorry, a stitch marker and coming in and doing an afterthought heel. I did the butterfly heel, which is a pattern uh, or a heel that is used by KF Jones of the Bakery Bears. And I, t I just inserted it as I knit. So this is knit um, as you go. So I knit from the top down to this point and then I knit back and forth with the cream, knit the heel and then kept going. One of the perks of that, two of the perks, actually, three. There's three perks. <laughs> um, one of the reasons I, I decided to do that was I didn't want to have to come back in and uh, cut any heel. It's just, I find it a little bit more fiddly with color work socks because you've got more strands going in the background and I just kind of wanted to knit the heel and then move on. So that was one reason. Uh, another reason was it was less ends to weave in because this cream yarn was in there anyway. So I just used it to knit the heel and then I kept going. So that was a couple extra ends that I didn't have to worry about. And finally, um, it doesn't interrupt, um, as you might imagine, it doesn't interrupt the color work patterning. So any sort of not afterthought heel. Well, afterthought heels and certain heels um, that are worked back and forth on half the stitches will not interrupt the flow of the color work on the other side. Where you might see an interruption in color work, not I guess it wouldn't happen in color work. It would happen more in self-striping socks. If you do um, a heel flap and gusset, it can it changes the number of stitches that are being used, and so in those cases you can get a disruption in, like let's say, um, a, a stripe width, which actually you'll see in, in a project I have on my needles next. Anyway, I'm really happy with how these turned out. I did enjoy knitting that little heel in when I was doing it. It was sort of a nice break and then I got to switch back to the color work. So the sunny side up socks are off my needles and I'm going to be putting all of my socks that I'm knitting for the summer of summer these socks in a little basket so by the end of summer I can admire all my socks. So this is pair one for that. The next project I have off my needles is um, another pair of socks. I don't think I was working on these. I think I was getting ready to work on these the last time I saw you. This is my July socks for my, um, I guess, personal knit along. <laughs> um, every month I pull out a skein of yarn that I set aside at the end of last year to knit a pair of socks uh, and try and use up some of my self-striping, mostly self-striping sock yarn. So July's sock yarn was a Targi Sport Base by Knitspin Farm, and um, it was dyed up in a colorway called Dragonflies, and I decided to knit a toe-up pair of socks, which is not how I usually knit socks. Um, and I cast on the DRK Everyday Socks. Now, the DRK Everyday Socks are written for fingering weight. She also has a pattern called the bear paw socks, which is essentially the same pattern, but in a DK weight. And I'm using sport weight, which is right in the middle. But because I've knit sport weight socks before, I know how many stitches I need to cast on, roughly. So usually with sport weight socks, I will cast on 56 stitches. And Andrea Mowry's DRK Everyday Socks has a stitch count for 52. So I just cast on 52 socks. 52, 52 socks, that'd be a lot of socks. 52 stitches, and I knit a pair of socks. This is the DRK Everyday sock pattern using a smaller stitch count and larger needles than I would for fingering weight. The sock set came with this lovely teal um, contrast color that I used for the toe and the flegal heel. And I think in this case, you can see, because the, the way that this sock is worked from the toe up, you can see at some point you start increasing stitches here to increase the width of the sock for the for that part of your foot, which is often the widest part right here. So you start increasing sock um, stitches, and in a top-down sock, this would be your gusset, where you're decreasing here, but it, because I'm working toe up, I'm increasing here. And so you can see these stripes here are slightly more narrow than the ones worked here and here. And that's, I think, what I was talking about when I was talking about the heel that you can just stick in and doesn't change the stitch count. It doesn't change the width of your stitches or the your stripes. Um, but you know what? I was sort of in a mood to try something new, some toe-up socks, and I'm really happy with how these turned out. I was, I have often struggled with getting the right um, 
foot length or knowing how far to knit my foot before starting the increases, but I think I did a really good job on this pair. I think it will fit me really nicely. And I do think it's very interesting the way that this heel is constructed, because it reminds me a lot of a, of a top-down heel, where this is like the short rows um, at the bottom of the heel. So if, if you could knit it this way, and it would look kind of like a heel flap and gusset, and if you knit it this way, it looks slightly different. That's the DRK Everyday socks. And again, I used um, some Knit Spin Farm Targi Sport Weight in the Dragonfly colorway. I think these socks look hilarious when you take them off the needles because, because they are ribbed. They just look so silly um, when they really suck in. Now these socks will probably go in my sock box for emergency gifts or when I'm feeling cold. Um, but I'm really happy to have another pair from my month of monthly sock club off the needles. Um, I've sort of been in, I wouldn't say a rut, but I have not decided on my next large project. My knitting usually consists of a larger project. So usually something like a sweater or maybe a larger shawl and a smaller project, which has lately been a lot of socks, but I haven't decided on my next project yet. I think partly because I'm waiting for fall sweaters. After having knit a bunch of um, summer lightweight tops, which often don't have sleeves or very little sleeves and are maybe shorter than some of my longer like wintry weight sweaters, um, it's just not as much knitting. And so I find myself at this point in time waiting sort of for the next big project. I'm not sure what that big project's gonna be. I have some thoughts on fall sweaters that I'd like to knit, but I'm also sort of waiting in anticipation of the fall like Rhinebeck sweaters that are probably gonna come out. I'm looking at you, Andrea Mowry. Your pattern's coming out soon and I'm a little bit tempted. So in the meantime, I decided I would knit for Craft Free Egg. Craft Free Egg, you've heard me talk about, I think on this channel before, it is a local um, crafty organization and they collect um, handmade projects for just about everybody in our community. There are, um, I, th I think at last count I heard seven, but there's probably more by now, organizations who receive hand knitted crafts um, gratefully for their um, communities. So those might be um, neonatal uh, units and hospitals who receive little hats to keep the babies warm or little blankets. It could be um, school programs for uh, kids who are um, less fortunate and maybe don't have mittens or hats or warm weather clothing. Uh, it could be people who are experiencing homelessness. It could be women who have been displaced from their homes due to um, violence or um, being in an unsafe situation. And it could be seniors who have dementia and benefit from fidgety toys to keep their hands busy and still their minds, much like knitting does for a lot of us. Uh, and it could be animal shelters who receive um, kennel curtains often or blankets for uh, pets who are waiting to meet their forever homes. So this is a very worthy organization because they collect just about anything for so many people and they collect uh they do a big collection four times a year and um the, just the number of donations or um crafts that are given and made um happily for people in our community is just amazing the other thing that is really nice about craft for yeg is you can donate craft supplies and other crafters may take those supplies and make things to donate so um, it's, it's such a great organization and it is so um, worthy of support. Um, I was really happy, uh, I think last month I was at a local knit night and one of the knitters was telling me that she had attended the collection and um, had really enjoyed herself and what they were looking for, um, for her to bring friends to help with the organization, partly because a lot of the people who organize this com uh, community are uh, retired or maybe um, slightly older and they're looking to help revive 
not revive, but just get um, more people involved because the more hands there are, the less work there is. And so um, there is going to be another collection in the fall in September. I think it's September. I can put the date here, but I'll tell you more when it's closer to collection time, if you're in the Edmonton area and would like to donate. Um, but also if you're attending the Prairie Fiber Festival, which I will be this year, um, we're going to be collecting uh, handmade hats, mitts, whatever you like, and I'll be delivering those to Craft for Yeg as well. So um, Craft for Yeg is always sort of like something that I keep in the back of my mind for when I have time to make things or to, to craft. And so in the last few weeks, when I, as I've been waiting uh, for new patterns to come out, new ideas to spark, I decided I would knit some mittens. And so um, I picked up some, this is Woolies Thick and Quick from Michaels. It's nothing fancy, but I do really like this yarn for this pattern, um, partly because it makes a very warm mitten. I wear mittens that I've, out of this yarn, in this pattern that I've knit. Um, I find them very warm. I find them uh, water resistant and they are uh, acrylic and wool. So you can throw them through the washer and dryer. Um, and they, they're so sturdy and they hold up so well. So I've been knitting uh, mittens. This is one pair, I think it's called the carousel colorway. And what I've learned is that the striped patterns uh, of the line brand Thick and Quick have slightly less yardage for the same price. So I think I'm going to start buying the um, solid color. So this is a tweed. My daughter picked it out. I think it's called Kale. I don't know. So I made a pair of mitts and two pairs of mitts and I'm halfway through, actually maybe 75% through my third pair of mitts in this kale color. And that is from two balls of the yarn. So um, I use the, oh, let's see what size, of, let's see what size needle I use. I use a six and a half millimeter. These are some cl clover, nothing fancy. Um, it's just a pair of, or a set of DPNs that I've had for a very, very long time. And I knit the super mitten pattern, which is from the weekend knitting book by Melanie Fallick. <laughs> it's right there behind me. Um, this is this pattern never fails me. I can uh, I, once I knit a, one of these mittens, I kind of have it memorized, and I can just keep going and not have to look at the pattern anymore. It's a pattern that's written for multiple sizes. I tend to knit this. This is the smallest size. Um, and because I use kind of a bulkier yarn, it is, um, ooh, that was exciting. Um, it is a, a decent size mitten. Like it fits my hand. It's, I would say it's a little bit snug on my hand, but I think for kids, um, like for smaller kids, these might be a little bit big, but then for bigger kids and maybe junior high kids who sometimes get forgotten about in, uh, knitting donations, I think this is a really good size. Plus, I think the green is a nice color that a lot of people might enjoy. So I have, as I said, this is three, I'll have four pairs of mittens um, off my needles in the next few days. And I'll just set those aside for the next Craft for Yug donation. So as I said, I have been waiting patiently for, insp not inspiration, I guess inspiration, or for the next pattern to be released. And while I was waiting, I thought I might turn my hand to some more cross stitch, which I have been doing a lot lately. I finished, um, the last time we saw, we talked, I finished Gloria's Greenhouse, which is another pattern in the Murder Mystery series by Diana Waters. And I remembered that I had this kit lying around. Um, in fact, it was my mom who reminded me. She was here, um, we had a barbecue, just a sort of family barbecue. And uh, she was in my office looking at my cross stitch wall, which is just up here at some of the many cr cross stitches and embroidery. Uh, and she was asking me where I got them. And, and I remembered that I had this pattern. This is a pattern by um, Junebug and Darlin that I had downloaded the PDF for. So um, many times I will just get the kit because um, I find it convenient to get everything all together. You get the hoop, you get the fabric, you get the pattern, and you get all of the threads that you need. You can get a needle, which I have a lot of now. Um, but I had this um, 
pattern that I had downloaded and last last year last like over a year ago maybe I had put together the kit so I had gone out and purchased all of the threads I had some fabric I had the right hoop and um it was just waiting for me to take the time to make it so in the last couple of weeks I did this is the um rosy chaos cross stitch by Junebug and Darlin and the reason I was attracted to this picture is it reminded me a lot of my my grandmother who um, was this cross stitcher <laughs> if you remember from when I was telling you a little bit about my tattoo uh, this is a cross stitch pattern that was uh, embroidered on my um, Ukrainian blouse as when I was I would say an early teen I got an adult size blouse and my mom and my grandma did the cross stitch and this is the exact pattern um, in fact, this is based on a picture of my blouse, but this is what they did the cross stitch for. And my baba had a lot of pictures of roses done sort of in various contexts. This is maybe a more modern take on that with maybe more modern coloring, but it did remind me a lot of her cross stitches, just the rosy theme, and the flowers. Um, this was a really enjoyable little cross stitch to make. I would say that it was a lot more approachable uh, for a beginner maybe than the murder mystery ones, um, simply because the murder mystery ones have a lot going on. In fact, I found them a little tim intimidating when I started. Not that I'm a super experienced cross stitcher, but I did find them, um, I think because of all the colors and the sort of detailed, the detail, um, I found it a bit more um, intimidating. This one only used eight colors. And I used all of the colors as recommended in the pattern, except for this lighter green color. I used, I think, one shade off, but I guess maybe that's the beauty of cross stitch. Much like knitting, you can choose your own colors, and I could have changed all of them, I suppose, but this is a very pretty little um, project. And so now this one, and so this little pattern that I recently finished, um, and this pattern that I finished, I don't even know how long ago, are going to be good friends and probably hang in my craft room just over there. I think they'll look nice together. And I did purposefully change the colors of this one. I think I used um, a peachy color that was in this one. Maybe? Close enough. Um, I did uh, see recently a, a crafter who I follow um, who has been doing a lot of cross stitch as well, sort of inspiring me a little bit. Um, and she finished up the back of hers with a piece of fabric, like a printed fabric, which was really pretty. And she's blanket stitch. So I thought maybe now is a good time to learn some blanket stitch. So I did that along the outside and I just wrote with a pen, Rosy Chaos in the year. Um, that's more for me than for anyone else. So yeah, these are two little, um, two little cross stitch pictures by, they're both by um, Junebug and Darlin, and they will be going on my wall over there. And uh, as of this, as of this viewing, uh, I only have one little kit left for cross stitch. It's a portrait for Gloria, whose greenhouse is right there. And so I think later this summer, I'm going to have to start um, looking into what my next project is going to be. It's probably going to be the fourth room in my murder mystery series. Um, so yeah, I think it's nice to have that kit around for when I'm inspired to start. Uh, and lately I have been trying to not have a lot of stash. I guess that also applies to cross stitch. Partly because I want to be able to feel like if a new pattern comes out, I'd like to be able to purchase yarn to make that pattern and not feel tied to what I have already purchased. I'm still undecided on if that works for me or not. I think it does. I think, I think I feel like when a new pattern comes out, because I don't have a lot of stuff that I feel tied to that I need to use, that I can go ahead and purchase yarn for that instead of um, buying things a little bit at a time and having that sort of build up in my stash. I'll just wait until there is a project that I really want to make, buy the yarn and make it. And that way I still am excited about the yarn that I have. Having said that, I do still have, I would say two sweater quantities in my stash that are waiting to be knit up. 
One of them, uh, I think I will be knitting later this summer. And the other one, I'm undecided. I thought I had a plan for how I wanted to knit that yarn. And now that plan um, I, is, um, I guess I'm not sure if that's the sweater pattern I, I want to use. Um, do you do that? This is, see, this is what I want to try and avoid is having yarn in my stash and thinking, oh, I can knit this. And then the yarn just sits there. And by the time I am ready to knit it, maybe my ideas have changed or my preferences from that yarn have changed, or maybe even my color preferences have changed. So I want to be able to use the yarn when I'm still excited about it um, so that it isn't lingering and I don't feel like I have to use it. Um, or I'm waiting and waiting till I find the right pattern for it. What do you do? What is your preference? I would love to know. This whole idea of stash can be, um, I, don't, I think some people feel guilty for the size of their stash. I don't. This is all stuff that I will use eventually. Um, I did a fairly decent paring down of my yarn a couple of years ago, and I'm still trying to be very purposeful about the yarn that I purchase um, and how I use it, or at least having some idea of how I'm going to use it. Like sock yarn is sock yarn. It's going to be knit into socks, but um, I have a lot of other yarn that I'm sort of trying to decide what to do with. Some of it is leftovers, so scraps, and some of it is just single skeins maybe. So I'm still, it, my stash is a work in progress, but we'll see where we get with that. I went off on a tangent. The last thing, <clears throat> the very last thing I have um, that I've been working on besides all of those mittens is another pair of Summer Lee socks. Socks are sort of a good hanging around and waiting project because they're so small and you can finish them quite quickly. And it is the summer of Summer Lee after all. So right now I am working on a pair of socks called the Camellia socks. This is from Summer Lee's book, The Sock Project. They're in the lacy section. And I finished the first sock. Oh, this is a very pale and sort of maybe not so easy to see. Um, but as you can see, this sock has a beautiful lace pattern that just runs down the sock. Um, and really that is, that's the feature of this sock. I'm using a pale peachy speckled yarn. This is by a local to me um, dyer called Numana and it's her Bur Barbary sock base. It's kind of a plumpy, here, let me find a tag. Here's the tag, Numana Yarns. It's a uh, very local to me yarn dyer, and it's called her Barbary Sock Base, and it is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. And in 115 grams, it is 384 meters, which does make it a slightly plumper sock yarn. It's been really nice to work with. And it is this sort of pale peach color with little speckles. Now, um, I did do a slight modification to this pattern. Summer's pattern has you knit the lace pattern directly down the top of the sock, like straight down the middle of it. But I opted to knit, as you can see, for the first sock, I knit the lace pattern off to one side. So all I did was I knit one stitch, um, Maybe if I go like this, you can see. I knit one stitch. <laughs> Would help if I held it the right way. Okay, so I knit it top down. I knit one stitch and then I knit the lace pattern and then I knit around so that on this first sock, the lace is centered more towards the um, right side as you're wearing it. And now that I'm working on the second sock, you can see hopefully that I did the opposite. Did I do the opposite? Yes, I did. If I hold it the right way. <laughs> um, so you can see now that if I show you it the right way, oh my goodness. So one sock will have the lace running down one side and the other sock will have the lace running down the other side. That's the only change I made. So these are the Camellia socks, a very sweet little lacy pattern from the um, sock project. Summer socks um, often 
are fairly short um, in the leg. And I think for these like lacy ones, I think they're very sweet in that way. Um, some socks I may be knitting longer in the leg, but I don't have a lot of shorty socks. And so I've sort of been enjoying trying that out. So having a bit more of a not very tall ankle sock. Um, but at the same time, I have been knitting like those, um, this sunny set up socks here. As you can see is like a longer leg, so they would be quite a bit higher up. And then even my um, DRK Everyday socks are higher up. So it's a nice mix. And these shorter ones I think would be very pretty in the spring or even in the fall with some shoes, but not right now because it's too hot. And that is all I have on my needles right now. I do have big plans to keep knitting some really socks. In fact, I have three pairs, three patterns, um, sort of in the wings and ready to go while I continue to wait for my next big project. Oftentimes in July, I am thinking about my fall sweaters, which um, I guess that's as a knitter, that's how things go. We're always thinking a little bit ahead in terms of our projects because it takes time. Knitting is a slow craft and it can take time to finish the projects. We want to be able to wear them in the right season. So um, I'll let you know when I've decided what my next fall sweater will be. I do have some thoughts and some plans, um, but maybe I'll let you know after I have told you all about my summer knits. Are you knitting for fall already? Um, do you have some patterns that I should know about? Please let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you're taking part in the Summer of Summerly Socks. And if you are, feel free to use the hashtag Summer of Summerly Socks. Uh, it's not just for finished objects, it's for uh, anyone participating. So if you have some works and projects, please feel free to post those too. I uh, am looking forward to spending some time beside a soccer pitch tonight and watching my kiddo play soccer. And I'm also looking forward to finishing up these mittens and getting back to my regularly scheduled sock knitting. I hope in the next couple of weeks you find time to do the things you like to do. I know I plan on knitting a lot. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.